golden afternoon, and I remember having the familiar conviction that life was beginning over again with the summer and summer. You used to talk about this this concept of like opening and opening me up to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've talked about that, and like, I think that's something that's really cool. Where we do have this, you know, this channel built to where people can share, and a lot, of, yeah, a lot of that thrives through long form conversation. But we have this channel built to where you can watch somebody's passion for something. And it, so, for instance, I was listening to, um, I was listening to. Uh, to the John Mayer interview I was telling you about. And he, he's, so he's been playing with the Grateful Dead for about a decade now. Yeah. Um, and he's, uh, it essentially took over like the Jerry Garcia, like, mm-hmm. um, he's like the lead singer for the Grateful yeah, Dead. Yeah. Yeah. But unofficially. Yeah. And, and, but he's like, I, he's like, we've been doing this for 10 years. Like that's, you know, plenty know of that. bands don't even, you know, yeah. Like we have our own history now and like, right. you know, he's, yeah, he's not taking this from a position. Like he very much respects and understands that this is not his, but he talks about his, when he, when he grew up, you know, he's like the Grateful Dead was always this thing for these, you know, hippies or like the cool kids. Or right. they, they, they drove the Jeeps deadheads. and yeah, yeah. It's like this cult yep. thing. Right. And he's like, that wasn't for me. And then he's like, and then one day it, something opened me up to it Mm -hmm. and I started listening and I started listening a little closer and then you start to understand and you start to be able to, you know, put yourself in the context of the music and let it just kind of wash over you. And he's like, and it just changed everything. You know, I'd gone my entire life and I'd never seen it. And then something just unlocked it for me. Yeah. And yeah, now he's, you know, he's playing these songs yeah, and no, if you told yeah. him 20, 30 years ago, you're going to be touring, you're going to be yeah. doing this. He'd say you're you're crazy. crazy. Yeah, and something just unlocked it for him. And I that's what I think these, especially long form, but these channels are so effective at. You can unlock anything. Yeah, <laughs> like you can almost if you see something and you think it has a little bit of merit, you can't quite get into it. Yeah, you can almost mm-hmm. dig into it more. You go on YouTube or you do, and you can dig into it and unlock it more for yourself. Like there's been instances where I've seen something or I'll read something or whatever. And I'm like, this is great. Yep. And I don't know if it's for me, but it's really great. And I can, I feel that like, I understand why it, it has, you know, why I, what, however it made it way back, it's way back to me, whoever talked about it, whoever I, you know, respected that recommended it, whatever. You can be like, this is great. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure if I, if I know why, I, I think it's great mm-hmm. and maybe it's not for me, but then, yeah, you go down that rabbit hole and it unlocks it and you can seek that out. Yeah. Like, and, and then you're like, Oh, this is great. And I actually love it. It's maybe, <laughs> you know, yep. I, I love having the capability to do that. I think that's something that is unique. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could always do it, but there's a difference between having to go seek out, you know, anybody in the world can do it now. They can unlock anything that if there's a digital, equivalent to it you can unlock it for yourself or listen to what somebody else has to say about it and i think that's just a it's good for history and it's good for the future of mm-hmm. of art or whatever we want to work or whatever mm-hmm. yeah yeah absolutely content whatever and you know similar experiences for me you know part of what fuels me to consume new and different content uh read different things uh is just just a real hunger for the you know opening up these you know new worlds i remember in college and i won't spend too much time on this but uh my acting teacher wanted us to, so that we could work on um our articulation and uh our uh, being being more cogent when speaking about the craft or interpreting text or whatever she assigned us to watch at the university library um the pbs series with bill moyers called the power of myth where he interviews yeah, yeah, Joseph yeah. you told Campbell. me about that yeah yeah it, i actually it watched literally the YouTube. Yeah. yeah i mean it like changed my life watching that yeah you know this is a i'm a 20 i think i was 20 20 year old kid you know growing up in small town illinois and you know, I've certainly read and, you know, studied French and, uh, you know, American novel class, English literature, you know, it wasn't like I was just watching, like mindlessly watching MTV yeah. and 
bullshit on, uh, you know, on, on television. Um, but it just completely changed how I saw, uh, the human experience and, um, it shifted how I saw people that do bad things. Like they don't think they're doing bad things. They're the hero of their own story. I mean, all this stuff. And I think even from that moment on that hunger for, um, having other experiences like that, where sort of like the, the, the order of the world gets shifted because of this thing that, that you saw and it introduced you to this new concept. I remember watching a documentary called what the bleep do we know about, um, uh, the impact emotion can have on, uh, on, on the formation of water, uh, th- all these things that it, that it introduced, it introduced, uh, um, ideas about parallel existences and all, all, all this crazy stuff. Yeah. And it just led me into this, all these new areas, a, a book called the elegant universe that simplified, um, the uh, theory of relativity and laws of thermodynamics and, and just like, like I literally yeah. read that book and I was like, what? Yeah. yeah. That's what gravity is. <laughs> Are you kidding just me? Gave you, That's how, like yeah. the theory of relativity just blew my mind. Just puts like a, puts a, it just literally container on all of this yeah. stuff that, yeah. Yeah. It just changed everything. I remember I would tell people, I'm like, you know, so, you know, I'm here on earth and you go to the, to the event horizon of a black hole right yeah. before it can pull you in. You're there. You're there for five seconds, 10,000 years has gone by on earth Yeah, because well, that's what, you know, mass and gravity and all that stuff does to shift the, your experience of time telling people like, if you're on a train that's going 200 miles an hour, you're actually experiencing time differently than the person sitting on the platform. I was like, wait, what? Yeah. You know, all that kind of stuff. Well, there's, <clears throat> I think it's interesting. Like you have all these you, it's almost a way to, I mean, it's just a way to better understand the world around you. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's a, it's a way to better, we're walking around naive about most things. Yeah. And sometimes that's, you know, sometimes that's a good thing, but yeah, any, you know, any piece of work, whether it's a scientific piece of scientific work or whether it's a piece of, um, you know, more artistic. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just helping to give you a little bit of extra context. So something that's interesting to me, and I'm deliberately trying to segue into what I want to talk about yeah, yeah, yeah. with Bastard. regards to the end of the piece. It's, <laughs> it's just all connected, though. It's, 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 so what's interesting is, you know, we're talking specifically in this instance about... King of the segue from the last episode, by that's the way. Right. I just can't. <laughs> Watching a movie, reading something new, power of myth reading the elegant universe, these things that literally reprogram your mind. They make you understand the world around you, how people yeah, yeah. work. Um, or at least give you, I maybe I hesitate to say understand, but more so just like provide an, an effective framework. Yeah. Like, and it's not to say that my framework that might be different from somebody else's framework. It's mm-hmm. not to give any one more, like, I think, you know, religion is an incredibly effective framework to view the world. Sure. You know, there's, you know, having, there's just, there's political systems that are incredibly effective frameworks to yeah. view the world. I might not agree with certain aspects of, right. you know, anybody else's framework, but mm-hmm. just to give a little bit of context on like, I think that, I don't know if there's any one way that the world is. Right. I think we just, <laughs> we're just kind of these things floating around and then like but it helps to have yeah. something to. Yeah. Just, uh, it's just a, a, a greater level of clarity to understand how to move through it yeah, or how exactly. to, or how to affect it. Um, so, you know, we consume these things that rewire us or open up our mind or change how we see things or lead us into new directions. And it's sometimes it happens to us, you know, like, I don't know, Audrey's watching something and you're, you know, it's, you sort you didn't like yeah. ch- seek it out, but it sort of happened to you and you get sucked in and it changes yeah. something for you. Right. In addition to, uh, Matt recommended this book. He said it was really eye opening. I'm going right. to read it. I had a similar experience. Um, and now I see things differently or have a different clarity, whatever. And 
how then is that new clarity or new way of seeing things going to impact your work, whether it inspires you to shift your work, to make new types of work, um, to enhance your work, whatever. Right. So the parallel is how do experiences not necessarily of our choosing yeah. lead us into new ways of seeing the world, different levels of clarity, inspiration for work, what does it open up yeah. in front of us to pursue, to seek out, to explore, uh, and, and to make. And so what I'm referencing is what we talked about in the last episode. And for those of you, um, who haven't listened to or watched the previous episode, I told a story about an encounter with a guy on the street when I was doing street photography yeah. where he tried to, uh, uh, kill you try to <laughs> kill me with a two pound hunk of metal uh, and just for the drama of it all we'll throw it on the table again for people yeah. who are watching this just he was not happy that I <laughs> took his photograph while he tried to chase down his dog and he came after me with this two pound piece of metal to try to bludgeon me with it um, and he was unsuccessful I got away and um and sort of what's that ripple effect that this is going to have? Yeah. Now, um, it doesn't always have to be something that is traumatic or dramatic. Um, it could be, you know, I don't know, a, 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 a series of things that lead you to an epiphany. Um, I kind of want to focus on stuff that is, Yeah. if you had your way, maybe you wouldn't want to experience that thing yeah. or have had experienced well, that thing. I think it goes into like, <laughs> so the first experience that pops into my head is, I guess there's, there's a couple of things that come into my, to my mind. One, providing the canvas to be open to things like this, whether mm -hmm. it's a traumatic or a dramatic or any, but like also something like there was, I was taking my car to get something checked on mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago. And I sit down and I'm like, nothing else to do. So I start reading through one of the magazines. And like, I read this story about um, this guy and he was like trying to find Jesse James's gold. Oh, yeah. And yeah. it's like, he had these wild things and he's like connecting it to these secret societies. And you're just like, what is like, <laughs> wow. And I mean, you know, completely going down like conspiracy rabbit hole and like there's symbols on trees. But then he like found some of the symbols on the trees and then like they apparently like found some of the gold and like, oh, wow. Yeah. It's like completely. And you know, so I had this whole epiphany about just like, like we, you know, there's just this whole idea of like conspiracy and kind of linking that to being the same thing as like, so what's different from this guy who's like linking all these weird theories together from like the, the tech CEO who's like, I'm going to like, who has the, you know, yeah. the <laughs> whatever it is to be like, I'm going to create a, a multi-billion dollar company mm -hmm. and uh, the universe and I'm going to speak positivity in and it's all going to, and then he, you know, some, some person does it like a Steve Jobs or something. Yeah, yeah. And he's like all these voodoo theories and whatever. And then he does it and it's mm -hmm. like, so what's different about that guy? And then like this conspiracy guy right. who's like searching for gold. And I'm like, that, it seems like it's the same thing. Okay. I would have never, but the point being, this is a magazine on it. Yeah. On a table at the mechanic's office. Right. I would have never, and I, I've, I've thought about this. Like I've literally written about this. I've thought about this for like the whole time since then. This was like a month and a half ago. Yeah. So this is like, I, this, this is a little dramatic, but consumed. You are sort of taking up some real you estate. You know, maybe not. Taking up yeah, a good maybe chunk not of real consumed, estate. consumed, but it's definitely, you know, I'm like, whoa, there's like, there's something here. There's yeah, character. Yeah. There's story. There's something here. And I'm just, it's interesting. And maybe nothing comes out of it. Yeah. But all of that because I just sat down and, you know, happened to be in there on that day yeah. where that magazine was there on top and I grabbed right. it and opened to that page mm -hmm. and read through the story. I mean, it was like a 20 page story. I was like, whoa, this is, it was like, and you know, like I, had I been on my phone, yeah, wouldn't have seen, wouldn't have come into contact with that. Might've come into contact with something else. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Had I brought, a, I got there and I was like, man, I should have brought a book. Yeah. Had I brought a book, wouldn't have come into contact. And I just think that's interesting. You know, it's not necessarily as dramatic or, right. you know, potentially life changing as somebody trying to throw a heavy object at your skull. 
But but I think that the you know and these things are at opposite ends of the spectrum. Not, yeah. not opposite, but they're at different different points on the spectrum, right? <clears throat> of what inspires us or takes up mental, emotional, real estate to then inform our work, mm-hmm. and you know stuff like that has happened to me so, so many times, right? Yeah. Um, reading an article, we just talked about it, Joseph Campbell, these things that just like ignite something in you to inspire you to to bring it into your work or whatever. And what I'm really curious about, and I don't necessarily need you to give me any specifics or a specific story. I'm curious with you, the role that dramatic or traumatic or... Um, you know, a loss in the family, a breakup, uh, a car accident, um, uh, uh, j- just missed a car, having a car, you know, yeah. like uh, w- how have those experiences, um, changed you? Cause I'm in this weird place right now. just to give yeah. some context, I'm in this weird place where it's sort of like, this is inspiring me to make some work. Yeah. But then I'm also like, or to communicate, what happened? So, for example, um, uh, coming out of this immediately, uh, like this morning, and I talked about this in the last episode, I kind of wrote something, uh, a poem, a piece, whatever it was, right? That came out of me as a result of this. I would have never sat down and, and written something like this had this not happened. I also am feeling like I want to talk about it on the Internet, yeah, <laughs> like, I'm like I kind of want to make a video about this. Now, obviously, this podcast is doing that. Amazing as well. way to contextualize. I want to yeah. talk about it on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> There's something in me, and, and so so one question I have, and we don't have to go down this rabbit yeah. hole too much, is what's motivating it? Is it that phenomenon where something dramatic happens in someone's life, and when they go to work, they want to hijack yeah. the lunch hour or the water cooler and be like, "Well, guess what happened to me, yeah. everyone." Because some ego thing is getting you the attention of yeah. Matt almost got killed by a two pound yeah, pump yeah. of metal. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and while I'm not aware of the fact that he's telling the story because he likes the attention it generates, yeah. his motivation is attention. So I'm like sitting here grappling like, is the what is the truth yeah. of my motivation for wanting to share this story? It's interesting because it like some fantasy that I'm going to make a video about it and have a clickbaity thumbnail that says that time I almost got killed doing street photography yeah. with a picture of a hunk of metal on the ground. Um, am I motivated to do that because of some bullshit ego thing or is there something that I'm working through that that there is an authentic desire to share my experience, whether it's warning people to just be careful that this stuff can happen while you're out there doing street photography, uh, that these are sort of the things that you might run into while you die for your art. Yeah. And I put that in air quotes, you know, that kind of stuff. It's, it is interesting because like I, you know, you, you separated them on separate ends of the spectrum and I do think they might be more similar than, than they appear at face value. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do think, so I used, I, I still do this. I'll, I'll, I complain whenever somebody's like, like goes out of their way to be like my so-and-so died yeah, or like my grandfather died or my dog died. And like, you have to be, I'm, there's definitely an element to that where I'm being a little insensitive to that, sure. that person's, I mean, obviously they're going through something and it helps to yeah. talk about it. But at the same time, I just, I have very little patience for that. Mm-hmm. And I, that sounds really bad, but I, I do like through my eyes or my subjective experience that whenever somebody does that, it is like they are serving a need for attention. Yep. And, um, like if, yeah, if you're like this terrible thing happened to me today mm-hmm. or this da, 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 you're trying to get my sympathy and attention yep. and you're doing it, <laughs> you're, you're doing it in a cheap way. Yeah on top of doing it. Yeah. So like that double frustrates me. Right. I'm like, you're going for a cheap laugh, right? You're going for the, the, the dick joke, Mm -hmm. Uh, um, (laughs) comparing like death in the family to dick jokes. (laughs) But, um, so part, yeah, I, I, you know, part of it, like I don't see there, there's, 
the exploring the idea of like, man, this happenstance scenario came into my life and I'm exploring what that means to me. Yep. Um, whether it's through art or whatever, I think that is important. Mm -hmm. And I think that that, but necessarily, I, I do think there isn't a, when, when the, the want is I want to go public and this is just one person's opinion. Yeah. 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 I want to go public with this because of this light, like talking about, you know, time is time is luck. Like we did in yeah. the last episode or talking about like, you know, the, um, like there's certain takeaways I think from that story that are, that are just good takeaways, yeah. general takeaways. And then there's, there is an element to it though. I'm sure where it's like, like my dog just died. Right. And I want to tell you about that so I can get your sympathy. Yep. Um, I'm not saying this is what you're doing, but I'm just saying, no, like, I, I think from human experience, like there's a level of, and I don't know, maybe I am just a little more closed off to that because yep. at the end of the day, is it, is it better for that person to hold that in mm -hmm. and not yep. share that? Um, maybe not. I think it's just, we, you know, a lot of, advertising and a lot of the things that we despise in this are going for the cheap, yeah. cheap thrill. Yep. And like almost dying is something that while incredibly moving to mm -hmm. when it happens to a person, mm -hmm. it's something that there's not a lot of nuance or a lot of, there's not a lot to figure out there. You know, like you have life, you almost lost it. Yep. Like we've been going through that for everybody. Literally mm -hmm. everybody's going to go through that at some point and they're either going to not lose it or they're going to lose it. Yep. Everybody that's ever existed has <laughs> in, the, in the history of the world yep. to this point. Yep. And, um, you know, so it's like trying to find the deeper nuance. I think that there's a usefulness to that. Agreed. Um, but what, like personally, yeah, whenever something tragic or potentially tragic or just dramatic happens, I try to, I, I was, I, I, told Audrey about this last week where like I was, I was writing something. I was like, I really want to read this to you or like get you mm -hmm. to read this mm -hmm. and like hear what you, but I was like, but every time I do that, I detach myself from it. Yeah. And I don't want to work on it anymore. Oh, interesting. Or I start to like, I like the fact that you gave it to her causes the detachment it, it, or it's, her, it's, or it's, when it's, she gives you what she feels about it. Or, no, then just you the detach. Fact, it's, it's like, I don't like sharing ideas with people a lot. Yeah. Not because I don't like, I think feedback is valuable. Um, but I don't like sharing ideas because I'll share an idea and then it just like kills the motivation for me to continue to flesh the idea out. Yeah. And that, you know, that's a bad, I, I don't, that's, I don't know if this, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know. You should put a judgment. So on it's, it. just, it's like, just, it's just what happens. Yeah. It's in like, so my reaction, if something life changing happened would be, yeah, I, I'd want to talk about it pretty instantly. Yeah. But then I've almost had to train mm -hmm. myself. And I'm not saying this is the right thing to do. I'm just, this is just what no, I've had yeah. to do is like, I've had to train myself to be like, there's layers beyond what you're looking at right now. Yep. And you want to react to this. This is the thing that you just wrote that you think is great. And you want to show everybody, right? This is the photo that you just took that yep. you want to share with the world. You're going to feel differently about this. Mm -hmm. And if you let it out, then yeah, it is like, you know, when you finish a piece of work and you release it, it becomes not yours anymore. It's everybody else's. Yep. So that's, maybe that's why the motivation dies. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean like in, in specific scenarios, I can't say like, I mean, you know, I've had some things happen in the last, in the last year that I've had to sit with yeah. and be like, okay, I need to, you know, how does this work into what I'm working on? And, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel, you know, I don't, I don't have a, well, I, I think and what I want to talk about is like, just sort of like, I do think there's an element of e ego to, yeah, to something like that. A hundred percent. Cause, uh, cause one of my first thoughts after it happened was, uh, and this is it, it, this too, I always look for these experiences to externalize character. Mm -hmm. What are some of the, the, the hardwired reflexive, instinctive reactions that you have to things that are very out of the ordinary. Yeah. How do you handle it? Well, and what was so fascinating to me when last week you were talking about that story, you, um, you started trying to break down his logic. What's the story? The, the story about the guy throwing the thing. 
the oh yeah, yeah. oh sorry yeah, yes yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. um you started trying to like like dissect his logic yeah 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 and I was like that's because not you know right some people are gonna react more on the emotional side and yep. you're like reacting on the, that's right it's the writer the thing to do right yep. <laughs> you're, yep. you're the going dramatist. In, what are right. the motivations like oh, and that comes the... from the power of myth yeah 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 this guy like it, it's, so easy, that it's easy influence. it's easy to stamp him as yeah. this villain but I'm curious about the whole context of his life that led up to him deciding to grab a two pound hunk yeah. of metal and come try to kill well, him. And it's, it's exact. it's, you know, the, especially if he's not the, insane, you just, you kind of nailed it because this, the problem that we have that I, I, this is why I get so, this is part of the reason I get so flustered when people, yeah. Oh, my dog just died or, mm-hmm. Oh, that is you're stamping it. Yep. Right then and there you're stamping it bad. Yep. Sad. Yep. Da- you're using these very you're labeling it. lazy emotions yeah. to label these things. And then you're not exploring them any further because, okay, well, talked about that. Yep. Sad. And uh, I feel, you know, <laughs> I want attention. Yeah. There's no nuance. Stamp it. Send it on. There's no nuance. There's nothing. No gray you're not area. learning anything about, mm-hmm. from it. Yep. And I think, especially as people that are trying to create work or, you know, trying to create something that's that teaches you more about how, how the world is, uh, you know, call it art or work or whatever you want to call it. Yep. Um, I like to use the word work, but yep. it, I think it should be our job to fight against that urge to just stamp it bad, scary death, move on. And cause I think like, yeah, when you sit and like you, trying to find, um, how that externalizes character. Are you trying to look at it like, okay, my first thing was like, oh man, that was a bad guy. Yeah. You have a lot of people that are not going to be able to go past that. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be able to get past that layer of that guy was like, we were watching, um, we were watching the zone of interest movie and the people behind us were like, like you, the bad, like bad, like this is just, you know, this is karma or like bad. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that might have been what Glazer was thinking, but he at least had the the <laughs> I, he did that didn't project into the film. I don't think that wasn't no. It wasn't like he just put that out there. He's like bad, and you know he he restrained himself from yep. doing that, and because of it, you get so much more out of it than just yeah. like good or and you know the well, people well, that think in those terms of just good or bad, good or evil, happy sad. Yeah. They need things that challenge them because the only yeah. way that to get past that, like you said, they need something to unlock it for them. Yeah. And the only thing that's going to unlock it is the process of somebody exploring deeper. And it's, that's the most uncomfortable thing, right? That's sitting down with the blank page and being like, okay, here's the obvious emotion. <laughs> now, what else is here? Well, with those people saying bad, it's like, but do you realize you're a few ingredients away from doing the same thing? hundred percent. Go watch the Stanford experiment. A hundred percent. It's all within us. Yeah, absolutely. And I, yeah, I, I just think the immediate reaction is usually void of nuance. Yeah. And the nuance is the most important thing for creating something that's able to maybe stand the test of time or mm-hmm. at least inform you know, I, I, the, the, the goal should be to inform yourself before anybody else. Like yep. if the work is informing you, it's probably going to inform somebody else. And, um, I, I think it, you know, the, the first step is to fight the urge to just stamp it and move on. Or, you know, and this is, you know, a little bit more, my question too, is, um, that state of immediate, of immediate turmoil yeah, and, yeah. and Un, like unsure, like what happened? What's, how do I feel about it? Is there trauma? No, I think I'm okay. Yeah. This, th- that, that state of, uh, of, of, uh, upheaval or un, uh, not knowing Pure what, emotion. not knowing what, what your long-term reaction is, your sh- whatever it is creating from that place, yeah. but then also reacting from that place. So, I, I was leading toward this, you know, cause I, I want to like go like, what was the, 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 these, you don't have time to like think about your responses, yeah. like, right. And in, in moments of trauma, like I'm sitting here, honestly, patting myself on the back because by some miracle I instinctively ducked 
And again, if this guy's intention was to truly hit me in the head with this thing versus just scare the crap out of me, if he was really trying to hit me in the head and do damage to me, kill me, whatever, I'm like patting myself on the back for having like this miracle instantaneous reaction to duck out of the way yeah. and then clear away from him and then run off into the Well, and you building. said like you, you had to sit and just like... Yes. <sighs> and so like, and at the same time, so I'm like, hey, you really handled that well. Because I think about this a lot in certain s- situations. What would I do if I got in a car accident with the kids in the car? What would I do if Goldie was choking on something? Like, I don't like obsess over these things, but I try to like think through bad situations to have some level of instinctive reaction to handling them in a, in a good way. So I was very happy with myself for that. But then at the same time, sitting in the truck, and after retrieving the object, my first thoughts are, I should post this to Instagram and say something like that time I almost got killed doing street photography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My that's, first, that's interesting. Yeah, 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 so then I'm sitting there, you know, I, I'm sort of consciously going, don't, don't act on any of these feelings, but just observe them. Yeah. Observe what your instincts are to do or what your a desire to do or a compulsion to do. See, and I think not acting in observing gives you, because now you have more of a, of a holistic understanding of like the character traits that build up to. Right. And, and the character traits that come out but in you, moments of you high drama. touched on something of the high drama and there's something that you, you kind of reached into my head because as soon as I finished like kind of talking about what I was talking about, I had this thought and I was like, like I, so I love like punk music yeah, or like, um, you know, like you have aggressive, you know, punk music or like, um, just something that's reactionary. Yeah. And that's so just raw, raw and of a, just of a react, like of a exact yeah. raw emotion. Yeah. Unfiltered. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's so much, there's something to that mm-hmm. that has its own artistic merit. Right. And again, this just gets into like, there's no one way to do things, but you know, the, the, you immediately get now. I think the like wanting to post Instagram, I think that is a different, mm-hmm. I think that's a different urge yeah. acting. But yeah, if you immediately just jotted down like what yeah. you were feeling, yep, and like a poem came out of it or something, like that's punk music, like yep. that is just in the moment, like, yeah, like, and it might literally just be like, fuck this guy, this guy tried to that's a human yep. response to <laughs> somebody, like, yeah. You, you feel like you were attacked and you are, mm-hmm. that is your adversary and you are trying to, yep. and so, you know, that's interesting. Um, I do think though there's, yeah, there's a confusion that's happened, like where there is this new, uh, we had a paradigm shift with social media where right. now it is just, it's, it's people going out and trying to take photos of cool things yep or, you know, people trying, you know, people trying to create what is the craziest thing I could do? I, I bought a Walmart right. and I, you know, everything in a Walmart or like yep. I stayed up for six days and counted dominoes or like <laughs> toothpicks or, you know, like some of the stupid shit that you see Yeah, where it is just like, pay attention to me. Yeah. And I think you've got to find the line mm-hmm. because I, I, you know, and there's definitely punk music that say pay attention to me or, yep. you know, hip hop or, um, like any any kind of, of music or well, it's film what, or whatever. And we talked about this in previous episodes. I think there was a short clip that we did and I'll link it in the show notes, but it was something like the title was like hijacking art for fame and fortune. Yeah. And I think in that moment I had a reaction, which was how do I hijack this trauma yeah. that I came away from physically unscathed? How do I hijack this high drama moment to... Um, Turn it into some kind to, of to put myself in some kind of spotlight or to get attention. Yeah. Um, and if that moment brought you to that reaction, and then as you processed it more, you you know, part of me was like, I'm gonna break on my YouTube channel that you know I've never been on camera, nobody's ever heard my voice. Yeah. yeah. Like this is the thing that draws me out. Yeah. yeah. And I'm gonna. So I'm I like, was. Yeah. And yeah. I'm crafting and all, and I'm thinking like. 
I don't know if part of me is like trying to rationalize the ego motivation for that. Like, oh, well, you're going to share some valuable information about how to be careful out there or whatever. Yeah. Like, and maybe somebody will watch this video and they'll be more alert while they're yeah. doing street photography. And my video will have kept them from, you know, getting, getting, getting in trouble or, yeah. or mugged or whatever it is. Uh, it's interesting how you almost position yourself as like, you know, yeah. I made the sacrifice, not, not you and, but just how people yeah, in you know, general position themselves as I like, had this experience and I can help people. But yeah. Ultimately, if I, I think really, re- if I really tunnel down to the, the thing that's really motivating the making of yeah. this thing, I, it, I think it's some I of the worst, bullshit. some of the worst films I've seen in the last couple of years. Yeah. I guarantee you that was the motivation Yeah, was like, they're selling it to themselves as this is, this is what's right. And I'm going to help humanity yeah. with whatever this right. is. And then, but in the back of their mind, it was just like, I'm angry and, and I can make money. Yeah. And I can get attention or get and nominated. I can point it, point fingers at these people who are bad in my eyes. Yeah. And it's, that's I can not helping get this off my chest. Yeah. And like that, that stuff doesn't, in my experience, that stuff doesn't age very well. Yeah. Like, you know, maybe record your thoughts immediately and then sit on it for two months. And, and if it is like, if it is good punk music, right. you'll be able to tell in two months because yeah. then all the emotions out of the moment. Yeah. But if it's or record know, the video, but mm-hmm. just don't release it, just don't release it. Exactly. And just and see what it is. If it's actually useful. Yep. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you almost got killed two months ago or two years ago or two yeah. seconds ago. Yeah. If it's actually something that's worth saying, but does it hold up once you remove all of that? Because when yeah. you're in the emotion and everything's emotional, everything's mm-hmm. great. You're, yep. This is the best thing I've ever written. This is the best thing photo I've ever taken. Yep. Well, you're living in it. You're yep. living in an emotion. This is the best song I've ever made. Mm-hmm. And um, when you remove yourself from that, because a lot of people, I think, just yeah, put yep. it out. And yep. then you start coming back to those things. And um, if I've learned anything from photography, I think it's like a lot of times the thing that gives me the strongest reaction in the moment isn't the thing that gives me the strongest reaction six months, six, right. 12 months, you know, 18 months down the road. Um, so that's, that's, um, it's interesting though. Yeah. That, that, and this is something, you know, we can, um, hang on to for future conversations. Cause I'm just, I, I'm fascinated about, you know, the different, um, when we make things and, the thing that we make its proximity to the thing that caused it the the proximity to the rawness or how profound or or big or uh um unprecedented or uh uncommon that event was in our lives and what it does to externalize the different things that motivate us to make make something yeah and I, I purposely did not say make work because obviously, because, because my assessment is if I would have just like turned the camera on and like told the story with some parts of my brain going, how many views would this get? What would the thumbnail yeah. be? How do you make it, you know, like, oh, well purposely don't make it the obvious clickbaity thumbnail, yeah. but still make sure that you're communicating the drama. Like those parts of your brain that's making you want to make something but connected again to at least my interpretation of it, ego, vanity, fantasy of a video going viral and bringing yeah. in new subscribers and then showing your real work to more people, like all this crap yeah. versus, and again, not saying you have to wait to make something, yeah, but just, uh, you know, again, for me, the thing I wrote, I, I'm like more, uh, positively connected to that than I am the video I think I would have made if I sat down, let's go live, not live, live, but like, let's turn the lights on the camera on and start talking about this Who knows? Like what you wrote this morning, like what if you come back to that in like a week? Right. And then that melds with some other thing that happened to you this next week. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, like creates completely... Uh, like other idea that you never right. would have mm-hmm. been able to conceptualize in the moment. Follow that. 
Like maybe there's a project here that you don't yeah. see right now. Maybe there's a story here. Yeah. Maybe there's, you know, maybe it's nothing, but, but like hold on to that emotion too. Like, yeah. you know, what was that emotion like? The fear, you know, the, oh, wow. Like I just happened to duck. Good job. Right. <laughs> like the pride you felt at the, in yeah. the moment, that's interesting. Yeah. There's a lot of really interesting stuff. And I think that stuff is more useful than, and, and more interesting to explore than, I don't, every time I found myself being super reactionary, I just, it's usually that leads to the cringe later on. And you always think, I mean, you, um, at least in my experience, whenever I make something that feels really good in the moment, usually that's almost a, the best metric I found to see if it's not going to age well. Yeah. There's some things that, but you know, usually the things that age the best are the things that have simmered yeah. for a little bit. And yeah, I don't know. It's, it is such an interesting uh, phenomenon though of like, I need to share. Yes. I need, like, I need people to hear this. Right. This is important. Yep. This is my plight. <laughs> this is, I know. It's such a natural thing in so many people. Yep. And I don't know if like it's imp- if it's like uh, exacerbated by the fact that I you know my other channel you know thirty thousand subscribers and like something that that does to make you think that these people like just like want to know what's going on with you yeah. just like sitting down to coffee with you or s- checking in with my wife at the end of the day like how was your day yeah you know like like does it implant something in you that blurs these lines between like a self-importance. Yeah. Just, just well, or yeah. Or, and just like, you know, um, blurs these lines between telling my wife how my day was with like writing a poem or taking a photograph. Like they're two completely different things. So if you have a place where you're making work or kind of what we've talked about with my photography, you know, sort of half work, half process, um, or half YouTube, you know, uh, cause it's like, Oh, check out this digicam and what it can do versus, I don't know, uh, a one word title and like some kind of something that feels like work. Yeah. Uh, or the work. Yeah. The, like those lines get blurred as you, as you build a, a community an audience, uh, connections with people and like that feeling of, I can't, this, this big, you'll never guess what happened to me. <laughs> yeah. This, yeah. you know, clunk. Guess what, Alex? I got a story for yeah. you, buddy. Um, you know, are, are, it's almost like you're an opportunist or a, See, a profiteer. I yeah. From, but I didn't feel from, like it's interesting though, because I didn't feel like, like the medium almost changes. Yeah. Cause like when you brought that in here, like that was just a story that you yeah. wanted to tell me. Right. And like, I didn't feel like there was any, there wasn't, some ego driving that exactly, and that's the thing. I brought and, it in here, and I'm like, but for some this is something reason, we can talk about. It on this. changes when it's like, I don't know, something about it like being exploited, right? Exactly. Like there's and a that's difference. I mean. There's a, a difference between yeah, it's, it's the exploitation factor, right? Adds this like filth exactly, to it. exactly. Because there's something there's something to walking into a group of friends and being like, I've got a story to tell, right? And you're not, you know, you're not begging for sympathies at that point. Yeah. Like, you know, some, some things happen and like, what, like, yeah, like I'll call you and talk about, talk, right. like, Hey, like just, I, I just wanted somebody to talk to yep. or like talk, talk through. That's different from like, I'm going to go and explain. And yeah, you know, and I think beyond even just like the, you talk about like you having the subscribe, like I think just the existence of the ability for the, mm-hmm. to put something out there yep. and the image that we have in our mind of like look at all these crazy things that have mm-hmm. made these people, these successes because they talked about it. It's created this like mm-hmm. expectation of like this bad thing happened. Oh, this is my ticket. I'm going to get, I'm going to cash in for all that this is. This, I will, and this it, will get attention. I could have died or like I'm going through like my dog was alive for this many years mm-hmm. and this is so sad. Like I'm going to like, <laughs> instead of just being willing to accept it as mm-hmm. what it is, it's like, 
I'm going to milk this for everything I can. Yeah. And then at least it's not all bad. Yep. But it's like, just, I know this, uh, in my head, it's just kind of a disgusting urge, but, yep. and I don't mean that in like, no, a, <laughs> like no. in offense, but it is just like, yeah. And look, I'm, I'm but I guilty think, of it. I've done it. I'm sure. I, that, that is what there's I mean. No, kinda, there's, this is not a holier than thou. Like, this is what I mean though. Kind of going back to, to the, the audience. zone of interest. If you put the right ingredients together, we can do things that are really, really bad. Mm -hmm. And so even though me making a video about my experience is not on the same level of genocide, yeah, yeah. Um, the right ingredients, uh, someone trying to kill me, yeah. I come out unscathed, I have a YouTube channel, I'm yeah. trying to make work. All these ingredients, if you combine them together, it could add up to, uh, you know, uh, me making a cringe video yeah. where I, well, where my ego makes me hijack, profiteer, play, exploit, and play it through even, even further. A, a like thing. you put, you put it out. Yeah. And what if it does? Like what, if, right. what if it is the thing yeah. that takes off? Right. Oh my God, Matt, I'm so sorry. Like you could have died. Yep. You are so, you know, your video was so powerful. And yeah. Like, thank you for sharing. I'm it. so, so like, you were the victim mm -hmm. of circumstance and da, 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 da. Yep. And like, and then you're, you're taking all that. Uh -huh. Man, this feels good. Like, yep. this has, uh, this has 400,000 400, views. Exactly. Like uh, the channel is a hundred. Like yep. I'm making a living now. I, I, and then it's, well, I need to do something else. That's like this, yep. like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it's yeah. a and then that, then you get into my wife has cancer literally. Yep. Yep. And it's that, or like, you know, you make a video like, oh, like, and not that that's a how this death affected yeah. me or like, exactly. you know, you start yep. feeding, you start that. doubling down on what worked. Mm -hmm. And so it's almost like, yeah, you played through the thought scenario and it's mm -hmm. like, what's the best case scenario? Yep. It's a terrible result. Maybe. Yep. So, I don't, yeah. So I wonder too. Very just, interesting. Yeah. And I like, I'm, I, I like, I don't want to say, I don't want it to sound like if you make stuff in response to a, like a traumatic thing or a, a dramatic moment in your life, if you make something out of that, yeah. like you're wrong, you should wait. Yeah. And I don't think that's what we're saying. I think if I, because if there's, if there's, if there's, and I'm not saying this is the thing you should do, but for me, knowing that there's an ego element and a fantasy element and attention seeking element to my psyche or whatever you want to call it. For me, it's important to do some of it. So like I did take a photo of the yeah. hunk and I'm like, just relax, just take a minute. Okay. Have your impulses partially make whatever you're going to make, whether it's a f post for Instagram or you're going to tweet, or you're going to send to somebody a picture and a text message. You'll never guess what happened to me. Um, or even the video press record, record it. Just take a second to just process process and just hold, you know, hold yourself accountable to like, what's the, even if you're speaking your truth by making that video, is it coming from, a good place, mm -hmm. a, 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 I don't know, the right place. Well, yeah, I don't know what, yeah, I don't yeah. know what the word is, Yeah, but like a, a place of, I don't know, rightness or pure, I don't purity. Know what the word yeah. Is. I don't know yeah. what the word is. No, I see what you're saying you know though. Like, I mean? is it, is it, is the intention? Yeah. Is it justified? Is it not even, is it justified? Is it, truth I, yeah i don't you know i don't know is it, it, it is it a true it's the truth of if you want to exploit something it's the truth to, try to get it's, this yeah, result the truth of the moment if you're and someone not the who truth wants to, of the if you want to make work and somehow in the big scheme of your life this is going to inform it whether it's this thing you make right away or this thing you make later if if a year from now you put that thing that you wrote on your website uh and you know somebody likes it and they want to publish it. You put that thing out there from a, a pure level headed, rational place. Mm -hmm. And it got a positive result because your intention wasn't to try to get these short term yeah. fantasy, uh, ego centric things. I think you're hitting the nail on the head right now as to why a lot of things that we see and consume yeah. Over the last 15 years or so, 
feels so useless. <laughs> like, well, the tools are there. Like, there's there's definitely amazing work being created, but for some reason, if you ask people, it's like, yeah, there's just a bunch of shit. Yeah, these days, and part of that is just there's just so much stuff it, that percentage of it is always going to be shit, and it's easier to go. There from, was just as much shit in the '70s, '80s, and '90s. We just well, we not had, as much of it as made it through the filter. Well, we had barriers to kind of slow us down to think about yeah. it, whereas now it's something happens, we can literally go live yep. on our phone. And instantly. it's like, I think that's probably, uh, you know, that's probably in the whole of things a positive, but now we have to figure out how to govern ourselves. There's right. no barrier to yeah. that. And I think that's a lesson that a lot of people need to learn with, with yeah. the work they're making is how to, I think a lot of stuff that's been released is just very much immediate reaction. You know, people, <laughs> people sitting down like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to write a screenplay in a weekend. Yeah. It's like, or you could maybe take six months, eight months, see it through. And it's not to say that great work hasn't been written. It wasn't like As I Lay Dying was written in like two mm-hmm. weeks over the, like during the yeah. night. It's not, but you know, there's, if there's a difference mm-hmm. between, you know, maybe that flash in the pan happens. It's the exception that proves the rule. It's not the, it's not the norm. And I think if we learn to kind of sit with our emotions a little bit, process them, process these events that we that occur in our lives instead of immediately going public with them right i think as a whole the level of the baseline of of quality would would rise and i think that's a problem it's just (laughs) we have the tools with the buffets in front of us right i'm not not going to get another plate yeah (laughs) like why would i why would i stop myself and there's some creators that i've you know, watched their content. And I really appreciate when they do kind of just sit down and, and have an honest conversation about what they're struggling with. Yeah. Um, there's a YouTube channel, Brian Burks, and he will make videos that talk about his struggles with asking people if he can take their portrait, um, and the social anxiety he has mm-hmm. about that. But it feels like he's talking about it with an accumulation of instances versus guys, guess what happened to me 20 minutes ago, you know, like, you know, where it's coming from that. So when we were talking about that, it made me think of a scene from the social network and it's like Facebook is taking off. Right. Um, or the Facebook and, uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg and, uh, the, the Andrew oh, Garfield's character yeah, yeah. and they're like, well, what if we did this and did this and did this and, 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 um, Parker, Sean Parker played by Justin Timberlake, who has gone through one of those moments yeah. where something took off. He, f- with that wisdom kind of says, Hey, let's just hold on because yeah. we don't know what this is yet. And I think th- to me, if I had to summarize how to process all the things that are going on after a highly dramatic or traumatic moment certainly make something. Yeah. Certainly write in your diary. Note it down, man. Journal Get it. it. Yeah. It, don't tape record something. A hundred percent. Record a video, but don't do anything with yeah. it. Yeah. Until you know what not what, is what the work yeah, is, yeah. but what what it is. Like yeah. what like how's this play out? I think for me personally, just Giving it time um, is is probably the better thing because I do have a predisposition toward ego-based pursuits. I do have a predisposition for attention-seeking. Yeah. Um, and, and these types of, um, really out of really extraordinary moments can bring that out. Uh, and it's not to say like kill that part of you, stifle that part you never want. Just be aware of it, yeah, and know what you're susceptible to. Because I have definitely a history of oversharing, yeah, a history of um, I think of, yeah. of reacting in the yeah. moment and not processing things. Whether it was losing my temper or gushing to a girl that wasn't understanding, you know, yeah. what I, you know, what I meant or whatever it is. Um, that's a lesson I need to internalize too. Cause yeah. you know, I, I'm an emotional person. Sometimes I'll, I'll be in something I'll be, this. You don't no no, no, no. Like no. you don't see it. Like <laughs> <laughs> you're exploding. Right. Yeah. And you, I think that's a great way to put it is hold on. We don't know what this is yet. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in every situation where there is an immense emotion, 
feel free to explore the emotion and talk about That's the emotion. Right. Don't it stifle was, yeah. it. Don't. But hold on. We yeah. don't know what this is yet. And that's the, one of the big, I mean, I told you about even a project with work that this week where somebody had shared something ahead of time. Yeah. And then we learned that that was actually not a good call. Yeah. And then they'd already shared it. So they shoehorned in to fit these expectations. Yep. So yeah, when you, sh- yeah, if you're writing something and you share it and then you get feedback on something, maybe that's not what's actually right for that piece in the holistic view of the entire thing, but you shared it and you know, what you had was only a, a fraction and you shared it with multiple people. Like I find somebody you trust, share it with them. Sure. Yeah. They, they don't mind that it's going to change, yep. but you sh- yeah, you share it with enough people. You get positive feedback. That camera just went out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you get positive feedback though, after you share it and suddenly it's, you know, it's this expectation on yourself to, I have to do this. Yeah. And once you've got that expectation built in, like you're, you're done for because Mm -hmm. you're going to keep that in there because, Oh, somebody said good things about it. And if that turns out to not be a piece, that's just going to hurt the quality, not a relevant piece. It's just going to hurt the quality of the work in the long run. So, and don't let, if you do have an audience, whether it's an Instagram following YouTube, a newsletter, whatever, don't let you know, cause we all have a following, right? We have our family, we yeah. have our close friends. Yep. Cause that was the first thing I was thinking of, uh, you know, like I want to talk about this with this person or that person or let them know what happened. And then it starts going out to the tertiary followers or community, whatever you want to call it. Um, don't let that hijack that part of you even more to be like, these people will be interested that this happened to me and I'm going to share it with them to get attention to build my following, to get more views, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. It had been a golden afternoon, and I remember having the familiar conviction that life was beginning over again with the summer and summer.